this is really going to be an individual style question because there is some, some theory that we can apply that is scientific. And for example, if we put two people across a table, that creates a barrier to communication. So given the opportunity to remove that barrier, we will open up that flow of communication. So where you sit in relation to that person will have a direct impact in how they respond. The level of closeness that you use physically will impact them. And everybody's comfort level is a little bit different. So saying you want to be 18 inches from the subject may be too close for some people or may be too far for others. When you get to a place where somebody is vulnerable, almost everybody responds to somebody leaning into them. It's an empathetic gesture. You don't actually have to hug, but the gesture of coming closer creates that empathy. So being aware of your body language and your body's relation to theirs allows you to move and respond in a way that says when they lean back, you've created more stress. When they lean in, they're seeking comfort. So there's a number of ways you can respond. I personally prefer to set up the room with as few barriers between me and the subject as possible. I prefer to have the room set up comfortably. Uh, you know, the old cement walls with a single pigtail light bulb hanging, it makes for good movies, but lousy interviews. Rapport is one of those very difficult to define places. It's not a thing, it's a state of being. And um, when you approach a person that you have never met before, sometimes that rapport will be almost instant. Other times you will have to work to create a comfort level between yourself and that person. And so the steps of rapport are assessing the subject, making the initial comments, and assessing their response, and then revising your comments. Realistically, sometimes that happens in a word. Other times that takes 10 or 15 minutes to establish. So it's not as if there is a series of things that you do. It's a place you get. Uh, and every one of us has had this. We've all met somebody in a random occurrence and felt close to that person or, or comfortable with that person very quickly. And other people, we never feel comfortable around. In an interview, we don't get the option to develop rapport. We must do it. I can't make you do something different, so I have to change myself to create that level of rapport with you, whether that means my body language, my facial gestures, my tone, making it harder or softer in order to get to that place of comfort. It would be great if we could give you a tick list that would say, check this box, and if you go through these steps, you will have rapport, but that's not really what it's about. Rapport is not about the other person. It's about you. It's about your ability to change yourself to make the other person comfortable. Before you walk into interview, any interview, you want to be as prepared as you can. You want to be as knowledgeable about your file. If there are steps you can take, if there are investigations you can do, if there are documents you can review, do all of those things before you walk into an interview. You don't interview people and then do research. You do your research and then conduct your interview. In going into an interview, you want a place, time, and location that's appropriate. So it needs to be a room that is neutral but um, authoritative. A conference room is often a great place to do an interview. A bedroom is a horrible place to do an interview. Uh, you want a time. If your subject goes to lunch at 11.45, you don't start an interview at 11.30. He'll be looking at his watch the entire time. If your subject picks up her children at 3.45 in the afternoon, you don't start an interview at 3. Again, you're not going to be successful. The mistake that too many people make in an interview is trying to prove their case to the subject. The purpose of the interview is to get information from the subject, not give information to the subject. So you have to pick in advance what documents or evidence you're going to show the subject in the interview, if any, before you walk in the room. The rule of thumb that I advise is no more than five pieces of evidence, no matter how long the interview is. Because if you can imagine a payables fraud, 
where we've got a fraudulent invoice, a check request, a payment authorization, a check, and a canceled check that make up the cycle of that payables fraud. If I show you any one document in the cycle, your mind will show you the rest of the documents. So I have to pick those documents that are most effective in showing you that I know without showing you how much I know. Props are very important for setting the stage for an interview. One of the most effective things you can do when you're setting up a room for an interview is walk in with a banker's box with the word evidence written on the side. The subject will spend his time looking at that box and wondering what evidence you have, even if you never open the box. Another key is to manage the suspect's fear. And I don't mean fear that you're going to hurt them or harm them. I mean fear of the unknown. And so if you have a binder of your case documentation, go get colored sticky tabs and put them on several dozen pages in the binder. Because what that says is, I have all these really important pieces of documentation. And the subject at some point in the interview is going to say, what are those? and you don't answer him. You don't show him because it's not about showing the subject, it's about asking questions. But you want to control that person's concern for what you know, not prove to them what you know. And too many fraud examiners go into an interview and show the subject just how much trouble they're in. They say, I've got these documents and I've got these videotapes and I've got these access control logs. And after the subject has heard everything that you have, they get up and walk out of the room because you have explained your case and learned nothing. The goal of the interview is to learn, not to teach.